nadanganya wewe kwa sababu katika nchi hii katika utawala wa ukolone hatujui mtu hata mmoja mwa Afrika ambaye alikuwa akitendewa vizuri na waingereza kwa hivyo wakati vya vita vya mau mau vile vyotokea kila mwananchi wa nchi hii ambaye alikuwa anaumizwa aliingia katika vita hivyo mimi nataka kutoa shukrani nyingi sana kwa watu wa Kenya wote kwa ujumla kwa sababu waliwezesha sisi mashujaa kuweza kumuondoa Mwingereza katika nchi yetu Sasa ilifanyika nini baada ya sisi kushinda vita vivyo Mwingereza na wale vibaraka wake walikula njama ya kwamba hao walikuwa wana support pande yake ndio watapewa uhuru ndio sisi tukitoka katika jela na kila mahali pengine tukute serikali imefanywa na iko katika mikono yao walifanya nini walichukua serikali halafu wakachukua kila kitu katika nchi yetu pesa katika bank vichaka kila kitu ambacho ni matunda ya uhuru ikawa katika mikono yao na akaanza kukura matunda hayo wakati huo wa siku hiyo wamekula matunda yetu ambayo tulileta kwa jasho machozi na damu mpaka siku hii wale waliopigania uhuru hawana mahali popote popote ambao wanaweza kukaa ambao wanaweza kupata pesa kuweza kununua dawa sasa hawa vibaraka wa wazungu wameingilia sasa wanakula uhuru wetu tulioleta kwa jasho na damu hiyo nimemaliza na nataka kuja ya pili nataka kutoa shukrani nyingi sana kwa Kenya Human Rights Commission na zaidi wa kurugenzi ambao wameikuwa wakiongoza kutokea wanjiko wa meno wili mutonga makao mutoa ambao ni wa kwanza kunipa sisi shilingi 1500 ili tuweze kupeleka kesi yetu katika koti Siwezi kusahau vile vile ya kwamba minister wa Tangula alipokuwa prime minister alikuwa foreign secretary ndio minister wa kwanza kutoa takriban ta, 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 taarifa yake ya kusema ya kwamba wanaunga mkono kesi ya watu wa Mau Mau ambao tulipeleka Ulaya tarehe 23 mwezi wa sita 2009 nataka kumshukuru sana kwa sababu alikuwa katika sekali wakati huo na alitoa uh, hotuba hiyo statement ya kusaidia kesi yetu siwezi kusahau kabisa yash pagai ambaye tunaye hapa leo kwa sababu katika katiba yetu aliwezesha 
sisi kutambuliwa katika preambu ambayo inasema tunaheshimu wale walioleta uhuru na haki katika nchi yetu kwa hivyo nipongezi sana kwa sababu katiba hiyo aliyoanzisha ndiyo iliweka mambo hayo katika katiba siwezi kusahau vile vile kuzungumza habari ya raida muheshimiwa raida undinga yeye amekuwa na sisi kutoka mwanzo mpaka leo tarehe nane mwezi wa kumi na moja 2003 Hongera wewe ni mwana wa Kenya ambao tulizaa tukiwa katika vita vya Mau Mau na tungependa wewe kuendelea kuongoza na kuwa na haki zetu zimetendeka Siwezi vile vile kusahau mawakili wa Ulaya wale ambao walipeleka kesi yetu katika koti pamoja na Paul Mwite kwa sababu hawa waliwezesha kesi yetu kuendelea na kushinda kesi hiyo kwa nini kwa sababu kesi hiyo ilitoa statement of regret katika bunge la Uingereza ilitoa vile vile pesa kidogo ya kulipa wale waliopigwa na vile vile walijenga monument ambao wanaita Mau Mau Monument katika Uhuru Park kwa pesa yao kwa hivyo hiyo ni kesi ambayo tulishinda na tutataka kushinda ingine sasa Tarehe moja mwezi huu ilikuwa siku ya Alhamisi saa na nusu meme neleketi na mfalme wa Uingereza na tukakaa naye kwa muda wa saa moja Nilimwambia nini? Hiyo nataka mfahamu vyema. Nilimwambia ufahamu watu wa Uingereza katika serikali iliyokuwa hapa dharimu waliua watu wetu waliwafanya watu wetu kuwa maskini waliwafanya watu wetu kuwa kutokuwa na mashamba mambo haya yote walitenda wakitudhurumu kwa sababu sisi ni wa Afrika basi nikamwambia afanye nini nikamwambia wewe sasa fikiria kwa sababu ndiye ndio mlitendea sisi vibaya uanzishe mtindo wa kuleta reconciliation na njia ya kwanza ni ya kwamba wale watu walionyang'anywa mashamba yao wakati wa vita vya Mau Mau wapewe mashamba. Nikamwambia vile vile wale watu ambao waliumizwa katika jela wakafanywa maskini wapewe fidia waweze kuendelea na maisha yao kabla ya kufa nikamwambia vile vile tulifungwa jela miaka saba watoto wetu hawakusoma uangalie utakuwa na scholarship scheme ambayo itawasomesha watoto wa watu waliopigania vita vya Mau Mau mambo haya ambayo nilimwambia niliyasoma jana katika gazeti la nation ilisema 
waingereza wamekubali kuendelea na mazungumzo juu ya reparation kwa hivyo nikaona ya kwamba alisikia maneno yetu na kwa sasa tunangoja yeye kuanzisha mambo haya kwa sababu yalikuwako kuna njia ya pili ambayo mimi nataka kusema hapa leo Martin kitabu ambacho tunacho kwa sababu ya tabu hizi sisi nikijibu wanjiko wa meano kama alivyosema na sisi vile vile tuandike vitabu ambavyo vinaonyesha hali yetu kwa sababu vitabu vinavyosomwa katika ma- mashule sasa ni vitabu vimeandikwa na wazungu na wale wanaitwa eh, wapagazi wao kwa hivyo sisi tumeandika kitabu tukiwa mau mau over trans association ambacho kinaitwa the betrayal of the mouth mouth freedom fighters ambacho leo tutaki sidua katika mkutano huu katika kitabu hiki utaona ni nini ilifanyika ndio kwamba watu wa Mau Mau wanaishi katika tabu kwa miaka sitini katika serikali walioleta na mikono yao kitabu hiki kitaeleza wewe kimkamilifu kwa nini ilitendeka namna hiyo sasa nataka kusema hivi Nina ile remarks yangu ambayo nimeandika kwa Kiingereza na mimi singependa kuondoka hapa bila ya nyinyi kuisikia Na kwa sababu mimi sasa nguvu zangu za mwili ni kidogo nitamuita mjukuu wangu great grandson ambaye jina lake ni jima la baba wangu ambaye baba wangu tulikuwa naye miaka saba katika detention camp asome remarki yangu morio yes asome Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Mau Mau war veterans and friends. Hamjambo. Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> I am uh, Mr. Gitu's uh, great grandson. He said that. And I am honored to be in this room with so many great minds and great people of Kenya. He says I'm his grandson but he's my father. He brought me up, schooled me up since my father departed and uh, went to his maker since I was 11 years old. So indeed, he is my father. So I guess Mze here allowing me to read his speech it's unheard of and uh, i think uh, 20 years back mtu kusimama anashika speech ya mzee atapata kiboko <laughs> so i don't know what i did to deserve this honor and i guess we can't all imagine how magical 
and precious time really is. Without further ado, I will begin my old man's speech because that's the main business of the day. In the 1940s, I was about 17 years of age. My father, Kahengeri Wageto, who was an agitator against the colonial regime in Kenya, introduced me to be an errand boy to other freedom struggle initiates in the KCA political movement. During my errand duties with the KCA freedom seekers, through civil ways of political agitation, I learned and fully understood why our foreparents were fighting the imposed colonial regime. The following are some of the matters I clearly understood to be horrible deeds done to Kenya Africans by the colonial administrators. Destruction of African culture and their way of living. Grabbing all fertile lands through power of the gun. Restricting African education to standard E4. Disregarding all human rights of Africans. Abusing Africans in all the administrative barazas. Among other brutal methods the colonial empire employed. In 1946, a new way of armed freedom struggle was agreed upon by all political agitators of freedom. I decided to join freedom fighters and declared my binding and commitment affirmation. Since then, I have been in the center of Mau Mau liberation struggle together with my father, Kahengeri Wageto. Until the decisive day of the 12th of December, 1963, when we heroically recovered our freedom and justice. To achieve the recovery of our freedom, freedom fighters sacrificed their wealth, body, strength, intelligence, and to the extreme, their dear lives. The gallant heroes and heroines brought to Kenya freedom and justice with tears, sweat, and blood. It's an incomparable task they accomplished for the people of Kenya. They rightly deserve incomparable recognition and material support. Through intrigues and betrayals, Kenyan freedom fighters were thrown into the wilderness after the colonial regime. The so-called home guards, loyalists, connived to steal freedom fighters' victory and destroy their lives at any cost. Freedom fighters to date live in abject poverty, lack of settlement, unemployed, lack of sufficient food, lack of money for medicine, and a host of other human problems. Having personally been at the center of Mau Mau liberation struggle for many years, I decided to write and publish the book entitled The Betrayal of the Mau Mau Freedom Fighters. This book will tell you why and how a government made to be by freedom fighters has neglected liberators for 60 years. Kenya, be blessed. And I would like all of you to repeat after me, please, with power, we had power breakfast in the morning, so it shouldn't be a problem. Long live, long live, long live, long live. Long live. the Mau Mau Patriotic, patriotic liberation spirit. Thank you and may God bless.
Nitamaliza na kusema hivi. Tulengozwa katika vita vya upiganiaji uhuru na wale waliokuwa mbele yetu mbaka tilile wa menza from kilifi koitare o somoe from nandi in rift valley wayaki wa hinga in central province na wengine ambao walikuwa mashujaa wa kukataa utumwa wa ubeberu nyenye ni wasome sasa tulijitolea kwa kila hali ndio nyenye muweze kusoma ukienda katika sublocation yoyote sasa kwa sababu watu wa nchi hii wako katika mkutano huu tuna watu kutoka Kilifi tuna watu kutoka Lodwa tuna watu kutoka Shaya tuna watu kutoka Kakamega tuna watu kutoka Bungoma tuna watu kutoka Narok tuna watu kutoka Kajado tuna watu kutoka Machakos tuna watu kutoka Kitui kutoka Makueni kila mahali ya nchi yetu tunao watu waliokuwa katika harakati za kupigania uhuru sasa nyinyi watoto wetu watoto wetu ambao tulikufa kwa juu yao wasome vizuri musikubali masomo yenu kutumewa kwa njia mpofu ulisoma ujisaidie na masomo na vile vile utambulike katika nchi yako ya kwamba ni mtoto aliyesoma wa nchi hii kama nchi hii kianguka nyenye mtalipa kwa njia ambayo sisi mimi siwezi kusema lakini mtalipa ningependa vile vile kushukuru president kwa sababu wakati alikutana na mfalme alisema mambo kadhaa alisema mjue nyinyi mlinyang'anya watu vichaka nyinyi mlipoteza haki za watu na kwa hivyo nyinyi tengenezeni kukue na full full reparation discussion hatuwezi kusahau kusema hivyo kwa sababu alisema hivyo right honorable raira odinga meme ningekwambia hapa jaramugi ugingo dinga alifanya kazi ambayo haiwezi kulinganishwa na kazi zingine kwa niaba ya watu wa Kenya chukua mtindo huo ufanye kazi ya kuhifadhi mambo yote ambayo yalipiganiwa na hawa wapiganiaji uhuru sisi kama freedom fighters na mimi naona naona governor wa makuene kibudha kibwana ambao amefanya kazi nyingi sana tangu tulipoanzia utetezi wa democracy na wewe pia usichoke ulizaliwa kufanya kazi ya namna hiyo sasa wale wote 
ambao nazungumza juu yao nafikiri maneno yangu mmeifahamu vyema kiduku endelea na kazi hiyo hiyo kwa sababu ni kazi ya muhimu kwa nchi yako watu hawawezi kuishi kama mawe sisi kuna wakati ambao hatutahutubia nyinyi kwa sababu tumekwenda lakini tuna matumaini mumesikia yote ambayo tumekuwa tukizungumza na vile vile mumejua yote ambayo tumekuwa tukitafuta sasa mjaribu kwa sababu jana British High Commission alisema British government wamekubali kumzungumza habari ya reparation na nikarudia shia yeye jana nikamwambia watu wa Mau Mau Fraternity wamesikia maneno yako na sasa tunataka wewe uongoze njia ya kufikia lengo hilo Shukrani kwa kunisikiliza Asante sana thank you very much honorable Gitu and James Kahengeri for the invaluable insights indeed he is a shuja wa Mau Mau in the interest of time I'll now welcome Honorable Okia Omtata. He's the Senator Busia County. He is also a member of the Justice, Legal Affairs and Human Rights Committee. He's also popularly known as Mtetezi Wawanyonge. I know we had so much of uh, Honorable Okia Omtata during the finance bill. Sindio? Karibu sana. Honorable give us your remarks thank you uh, the gidwa kihengeri i think is the oldest member here honorable right honorable prime minister uh, honorable raila amolo dinga and all my fellow brothers and sisters in the struggle hamjambo and but uh, <coughs> nimeshukuru sana kuwa hapa na kusikia machacha ambayo nimesikia nimekuja kuchelewa kwa sababu mnapojua sasa hii tunakaa kama majaji kule kwa senate kuamua mambo yenye metoka meru na tumepatiwa break ya saa moja na nusu na nikaona nikimbie nija hapa tusalamiana alafu nirudi niendelee na ile kazi mlinipea so asanteni sana yangu yatakuwa mafupi jambo la kwanza nataka tuelewane kama huna story kwa Kiswahili wanainaitwaje wana kama huna hadithi lakini ya hadithi na kaka kama yasungura mjanja lakini <laughs> kama huna hadithi if you don't have a story you don't exist it's out of the story that you have that you can have claims to anything today the most powerful people in the world are the Jews as a community why they have a very long story and so our story needs to be understood needs to be documented needs to be told should i speak english or swahili swahili eh huh? okay so hiyo hadithi yetu inataka ielewe tuielewe vizuri tuweze kuiandika tuweze kuitunza na tuweze tuweze kuitangaza 
ndio watu wajue kwamba sisi pia ni watu ambao wanatoka mahali fulani na wanamuelekeo fulani na ndio maana katika seneti tumaamua kwamba haya mambo haya makosa aliyotendwa na wakoloni wa ni lazima yaandikwe na kwa sasa hivi tunataribu kutengeneza tume ambayo tunataka kwenda kwa kila county yaandike ni vitu gani wakoloni walitenda kama alipora mali yenu mlikuwa na dhahabu kama kakamega itaandikwa na tutafute hiyo dhahabu ilienda wapi na iregeshwe kwa wenyewe tumeelewana what i'm saying is that right now in the senate we have made a decision to document the atrocities that were done by the colonialists in this country and we are going to form county based committees of detail to interrogate and audit our narrative to be able to ferret out violations of human rights and other crimes against humanity and then from there we would want to make it a state project to demand reparations it will not be done by ngos it has to be the state with, with the support of ngos not the ngos leading the fight that's what i think in the senate we have resolved and we are working towards the legal framework for doing that jambo la pili umu sukumo ni kwamba tumesikia mzee gedu akisema tulinyanga walikuja wakawanyanganya wakatunyanganya haki yetu mashamba yetu na kadhalika na sasa hivi kuna wale ambao watu wanaendelea kufanya hiyo kazi wanatunyanganya haki yetu wamekaa kwa muofisi wanatuibia na wanatuletea umaskini hiyo ni lazima tukabiliane nayo na ndio maana sasa <coughs> tukitoka hapa kwenye hii msukumo wa liberation wa ukombozi lazima tuingie msukumo wa emancipation sijui kwa Kiswahili emancipation ni nini eh yeah? rida hadi emancipation kwa Kiswahili ni kwa English kwa, 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 kwa tumefanya ukombozi wa kujikomboa kwa mkoloni lakini hiyo kujikomboa ile ni kama kuvunja jela kama wewe umefungwa kwenye jela alafu kuna kuja wakati wanasema hiyo jela lazima ifunjwe itavunjwa alafu naambia wewe naenda nyumbani lakini utaenda sasa waangalie huna, huna transport huna nini jioni ikifika utarudi kwa jela kwa mwenye jela useme usinisaidie nilale tu siku moja tena kwa hii jela nikijipanga kwenda nyumbani sasa tunasema kuvunja jela haitoshi. Ile haki yako ambayo ulipoteza ukiwa kwenye hiyo jela lazima upewe. Na ndio maana sasa tumeanza kuangalia kwamba mambo ya uchumi. Mambo ya uchumi ni muhimu sana. Tuacha porojo yote. Suluhu ya umaskini ni sisi wenyewe kujipanga na kusimamia uchumi wetu kwa njia ambayo inafaa tuanze kuangalia kwamba mali yetu ambayo tunatoza kwa ushuru inafanya kazi gani inatumika vipi na tuache mambo ya kutegemea mambo ya agriculture at the backbone of the economy is agriculture that's an insult in the 21st century we must get into the service industry we must begin competing with the rest of the world we must begin embracing our comparative advantages we must begin creating millionaires in our villages we must see rich people across the country and we are not going to do that just by repeating this mantra that agriculture 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 we must manufacture sasa hivi tunapigana kule bunge kuna ile mambo ya kutengeneza magari ee automotive uh, industry ukiangalia kulikuwa na agreement ilitengenezwa na UN 1958 ambapo ukisaini hiyo agreement 
mnaweza kuwa na, na kiwanda chenu hapa Indasoleria na mna manufacture kama ni carburetor ya, ya Toyota ama ni filter ya Toyota na itakuwa genuine original equipment yenye inaweza kuuzwa hata Uingereza kuna mabwenyenya hapa walikataa kusign hiyo treaty mpaka sasa hii hatuja sign hizo vita ndio tunapigana sasa hii tunataka kujikomboa kiuchumi ule mtu anatukalia mzungu alienda yale makosa alifanya tutamwandama lakini hata tukipata hiyo haitatushibisha lazima tuanze kujiuliza sisi kama watu wa dola hili ni vipi tutatajirika hakuna vile mmeru atauza miraa atajirike tujenge viwanda tukaanza kuingia kwa hizi industries zingine ambazo zinafanya hivi hivi na vile na kama moto vehicle tunajaribu kusukuma tukiweza kutengeneza asilimia 40 ya moto vehicle hapa Kenya itatusaidia kwa njia kubwa sana ni unapata shida imekuwa ya miaka yote watu walikataa kuweka vidole mahali fulani kwa sababu uchumi unaendeshwa na traders not investors We have very very many transactional characters in this country. They drive the economy on, on the basis of trade, not investment and growth. Not development. And that is where we must take our next frontier to fight so that we can get emancipation. So that we can get rich people in this country. So that we can get to compete with the rest of the world. But to get there we must tell our story of where we are coming from. And that's why efforts like this are extremely important. Because we must be able to remind people that at one time some people thought we did not deserve to live in this country. And they wanted to exterminate us. And that can happen again. So how do you protect against that? It's the same people, it's the same ideologies everything is the same so how do we how do we how do we protect ourselves from these existential threats that are coming look at the history of africa look at the leaders who are assassinated what kind of leaders were they look at the history of africa look at the leaders who find it impossible to ascend to power even when they win elections they can't ascend to power what history is that what does it tell us so beyond liberation let us look at emancipation let us look at emancipation let us transit from the, nar the narrative of, of Joshua into the promised land to Nehemiah coming back from Babylon. We are no longer in Egypt. We left Egypt in 1963. Right now we are in Babylon. So we need to find a formula of getting out of Babylon back to Jerusalem. I'm using the Jewish professed Christians and the Jewish <laughs> you have grafted yourself onto the Jewish story. So it's part of our story. That's why I'm With everything you have gained how do we go back and be the people god intended us to be how do we go back to be